I've always tried to come at the idea of vision loss with this is my one unique time on this planet so yep. if it's going to be blurry let it be blurry and you know love it might as well face it with a good attitude while doing fun things that make you feel happy and joy djb welcome to the see-through podcast hey Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I want to be. I want to be corny and be like DJ B in the house. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming on. It's gonna for sure. I think this is gonna be fun. Um, I have some things I want to talk to you about, and hopefully, some new things pop up that I don't yeah. even know that I want to talk to you about. But sometimes Heck that happens, yeah. and it's fun. But I think. Uh, I like to start each episode, you know, and let my guests introduce himself. You don't have to make it like super long or you don't have to tell your whole life story, but just enough to get everyone up to speed on who you are. Word. Okay. What's up? I'm DJ B or Bridget. Um, grew up in Dallas, Texas at 12 years old, got diagnosed with Stargardt's. So I'm legally blind um, in both eyes, obviously, and can't drive, can't do any of that. But what I can do is play fabulous music. And I've been a DJ for coming up on like eight years now. And it's my full-time hustle. I went to college, but decided that DJing is more my my vibe and what makes me happy and feel good. So that's kind of my me in like a little nutshell. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, and um, DJing about eight years, that's that's quite a long time. Um, how, yeah. how did you get into DJing? Okay, so it kind of goes hand in hand with my vision, I guess. Yeah. Um, because when I was about 16, so I'm from Texas. Okay. So getting your driver's license. Is I love like, Texas, by the way. We love Texas. <laughs> Big, beautiful Texas. Yeah. Um, but so it's it's very part of the Texas thing is getting your driver's license yeah. because everyone drives here. And so I obviously couldn't get one. And I was kind of in that mindset of just being down on myself mm -hmm. and pretty bummed because um, everyone got a got to be able to drive around and get independence and whatever. But at that time I was really into Skrillex yeah. and like new, I guess I was like 2015, 2014, 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to do something cool. So to take out my like frustrations, I my friend's older brother was going to college and he was selling his old DJ equipment. And it was like a teeny tiny little little mm. DJ controller. And so I got that and just would sit in my room and just grind on it until it was pretty much broken. <laughs> and that, that was like my first uh, controller I took to shows and stuff. But yeah, so I just like sat in my room and taught myself and was, you know, vibing in my parents' room, <laughs> in my parents' house probably playing really loud, obnoxious dubstep, but hey. <laughs> yeah, Skrillex. I, uh, Skrilly. <laughs> I jammed, I've been to a Skrillex show before, and uh, in college I uh, listened to a lot of Skrillex. In fact, I listened to Skrillex when he was part of um, the, his band, uh, the From First to Last. From First to Last. Yeah, because I'm, yes. I'm like a, a secret like emo kid, basically. Me too. I was a warp. I was a warp tour baby. For oh, sure. for sure. I went to warp tour three years in a row, and I. Yes. You know, it's it's such a fun time. It's not around anymore, which is sad. But mm -mm. Um, not not like how they used to, yeah. where it was like every other day and just like crazy, crazy heat yeah. and just so many stages. Oh, yeah. I loved warp tour. But yeah, he My heart. Skrillex is still doing his thing though. He's still he's still oh, yeah. uh, doing his thing. So that's cool. Yeah. So you, you kind of needed an outlet. You needed mm -hmm. to blow off some steam basically. And music is honestly probably the best way to do that. It's my yeah. favorite art form. Um, if I'm ever in a mood, I'll, I'll use music to kind of alter it or just to kind of sit in a mood. You know, let's say I'm feeling sad one day. I might just sit in to some sad songs, you yeah. know, or happy vibes or whatever. Music kind of, it's it can be a friend. 
It really can. Yeah. And it can shape how you are, how your emotions go throughout the day or week or whatever. Yeah. And it is nice. Sometimes it, I feel like when you're sad, a lot of people are like, oh, just listen to happy stuff. Be happy. Yeah. Uh, no, you got to feel it. Uh -huh. You got to release it. You got to like allow yourself to give yourself time to feel those things. And so I think that's what's so beautiful about music. Oh, I agree a thousand percent. And it, it kind of like connects to vision loss. You kind of have to sit in it. You know, you can't really mm -hmm. avoid it. You can't just say, I'll, I'll put this off till, you know, next week, whatever. Because vision loss just kind of comes and you mm -hmm. have to kind of deal with it. Um, yeah. And I think it's great to have all sorts of different outlets to kind of process it and navigate vision loss. Um, when it comes to DJing, <clears throat> you you mentioned how you got started. So mm -hmm. how did how did you get to where you at where you are at now? A lot of practice, <laughs> first of all. A lot of just like grinding, sitting. I have behind me. Uh, I have a table set up back there that has like my controller and everything. So that's like my little home studio, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I guess. But. Um, it really just took me to uh, reach out to people. Like when I first started, I was super like ambitious of just yeah. being like, hi, I'll play for free. My name's DJ B. Uh, I, I can play dubstep hip hop. Like literally I can play whatever. Like, is there a theme? I'll dress to the theme. And I was yeah. so just like over the top and just blowing up social media p pages. And I would send people mixes and Next thing you know, I would get booked here and there. And from there, it's just kind of like word of mouth. And, you know, it kind of grows from from that. That's how it always is in art. I think when you're starting out, you, you're like really hungry and you're just mm -hmm. kind of really just hungry to kind of play or perform or create anywhere. So you're more open to like throwing yourself out there like that. But then once you start polishing your your art form, you kind of it's the only really way to find out who you are as an artist is by doing those like, let me play for free. Let me try this. Cause yes. then you kind of experience you're like, well, I don't like doing that. And yes. I do like doing that. I like, don't like that style of music, but I do like that style of music and uh classic New York city sirens. Going oh, <laughs> of course. Uh, of course. They don't care that I'm podcasting. Yeah. Uh, for real. I know they should have gotten the memo. Yeah. I know. But that's awesome. Yeah, I, I uh, relate to that and to a degree where starting out, you know, trying to find out what you want to do and then you kind of keep going on this journey and then you make it somewhere and you're still on the journey, you know, just like I'm still on the journey. Oh, absolutely still on the journey. I'm still in that phase of like, well... <clears throat> the club I'm playing at has about 15 people in it, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and it's so, cause right now, I live in a college town. I live in college station, Texas, yeah. which is where Texas A&M is. Cool. And during the summertime, so during the year, we have like 80,000 students that are here yeah. during summertime, pretty much everyone leaves because for summer classes, they're all offered online. So yeah. like why stay in this small little town when you could, be at home or on yeah. vacation. And so uh, it, it's so crazy because during the summertime, it becomes almost ghost town-esque and you'll go from like graduation weekend, packed, bottle service, loud, people everywhere, whatever, to the week after, after move out and no one's there. And you have to take that feeling of like, okay, okay, I'm on my journey. Like, this is how it's supposed to be. Like social media clouds me thinking that everything's supposed to be like, Coachella all the time, yeah. you know, and then other times when you're just like, okay, no, it's just going to be this one little group that's celebrating their 22nd birthday. <laughs> and, you know, you just got to play for your little crowd. But you, it's interesting being on that journey of like, some days it's great, some days it's bad, you know. Oh, definitely. You know, that's how that I, I relate to that too. You know, you know, some episodes I put out, I feel like, they're like a drop in the bucket of, you know, what YouTube is or, you know, what my competition is or, um, but you just got to keep going, you know, and, uh, when you're luckily, when you're passionate about something, it just kind of, you don't really mind, you know, the yeah. grind of it. 
Um, plus it humbles you, I think. Totally, totally. It puts you in your space of like, okay, I still have to work really hard <laughs> yeah. for what I really want to do, you know? Yeah. Because you can, it, it, at least for me, like I've been here, I'm about to move okay. up to the big city. I'm going to Dallas. Oh, That's sick. where I'm from. So back home. Um, I've been here since 2016. So pretty much my whole DJ career has been here. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of ready to step out of the college realm, you know, yeah. and enter the real world. <laughs> <laughs> the real world. Yes. It's out there. I know. Sometimes I don't I, know if I'm a part of the real world <laughs> or if I've made my own weird world. Yes. Or That's what it, it feels like for me most of the time. <laughs> I'm just in my own little weird bubble yeah. and I'm very okay with that. For sure. So let's talk about, you know, so we've established your DJ. Yes. We've established your journey, you know, as one, like, the DJing industry is like, from what I've researched and kind of know just from listening, is it's like primarily like a male dominated industry, right? Totally. So then so you're female DJ, mm -hmm. and then you also have, you know, Star Guards. Yeah. Um, so that kind of puts you in a really unique position as a DJ. Um, does, how, how does, does that, do you think that fuels? you or do you think it's just it's not even part or do you, do you are you like conscious of that or like how does that impact your like For sure. thoughts yeah so as far as being a woman in the industry it's definitely getting a lot better yeah. there's a lot more women that are um at least like getting interested in DJing and getting those opportunities of like playing at nightclubs. Like there's a girl in my town now, I've al always been like the only girl DJ. And finally we have like another girl who's behind the deck. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> like, because you know. So there's no beat, so we, there's no like, oh, I'm the only no, DJ no, around here. It, it can't be like that. <laughs> you gotta gotta support your girlies, yeah, yeah. you know? Because if if it was like that, then I feel like that would be so um, discouraging for other girlies to hop in it yeah. and it would keep it kind of like the boys club that it has been. So, you know, we all got our own style and our own way of doing things. Sure, but for sure. I always want like new new minds behind the the decks, you know, because it's everyone has their own interpretation of what they think like a good night at the club is. So might as well hear what some other cool little gal has to play. Oh, definitely. But um, yeah, so the competition of, of that is starting to like level out more, cool. getting more girlies, which love. As far as other blind DJs not too many um <laughs> there's a few out there but that's definitely where i get the most like questions and insecurities and stuff like weird things that happen at the crowd like with crowds yeah um because most djs you know they all most of them use computers and so people will come by and like look behind you or see what you're doing yeah. and when they see my stuff is zoomed in like crazy i use a mac and yeah. so i use um i can't even i don't even know what button this is but i press like one of these buttons and then zoom in with two fingers and it yeah. makes my whole screen huge and that way i can see it pretty good yeah and people will be like whoa what are you doing like that's crazy are you blind you're blind that's crazy and you're like ah, like <laughs> it's a drunk college kid like yeah. it's okay yeah like ha 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 yeah i am why don't you just wear contacts just put in contact you know stuff like that and so that's definitely like the hardest part um it, it just like triggers insecurity pretty oh, easily yeah. there's so, so much ignorance out there already when it comes to, to like blindness and mm -hmm. people not really understanding that it's a spectrum so then mm -hmm. when you throw in like alcohol on top of that <laughs> oh buddy my my buddy's blind oh, yeah. and you're like and you're like oh my god like oh, please like yeah. please just sleep me alone like i hope you have a good night but it, that's 
for a little bit, I have I was playing at a club that had, like in the DJ booth, on either side, on the left and right side, there were um, like plexiglass. Yeah. So, you know, there would be a booth and then my DJ booth and another one. And I'd be in the middle. And um, which I love the plexiglass so they don't spill their drinks on oh. me or, you know, get their sweatiness on me, yeah. whatever. But <laughs> they will like put their head up against the plexiglass and stare at my screen and be like, like get, just point at my eyes, point at their eyes and be like, what are you doing? And oh dude, for the first few months of me DJing at that bar with that plexiglass and kids would just be looking at me like a, like a fish at like an aquarium. Yeah, yeah. Just, and I knew that they were trying and maybe this is me projecting my own insecurities onto them but i could in my head i was thinking that they're thinking like what is this freak girl doing <laughs> like what oh my god uh, why can't she just do it normal and so it would get me so bad in my head that sometimes yeah. i would literally like duck down underneath my dj booth like grab my phone just like start scrolling and just be like just breathe just breathe like they're mm. not you and so a lot of times that would just get so in my head. And now I'm getting to the point where, you know, I, everything's in the book has been thrown at me, <laughs> said at me. Oh, so yeah. it's just kind of like, eh, whatever. But it took me a while to get used to, you know, my dis disability, my invisible disability sure. being incredibly visible for sighted people. Yeah. And so that was something that took me a little bit to like process. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, when, when when cane users use their cane, it kind of signals to the world that they ha they have like a visual impairment, um, mm -hmm. or so that your laptop when you're performing is kind of you know maybe what sig signals to others. Um, I think it's I think it's amazing. You know, I think it's cool um, that you have learned you know to make it work for you. I think that's awesome because as a video editor. I'm always kind of paranoid about like, as my vision declines, am I going to be able to do what I do? Um, right. And then there's like certain tools that I, I'm going to learn to use that help make video editing more accessible and things like that. So th at the end of the day, I think as long as I can do it, I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'll be happy. The, the good news for me is I won't have people over my back watching me edit at, at my apartment you know <laughs> yeah um, and i feel like it would be a lot better if those people just weren't as tipsy because i feel like when a little bit oh, of yeah. alcohol a little bit of whatever gets in their system they just instantly start um a little bit of ignorance yeah. where you're like oh it's okay yeah yeah, no, yeah, alcohol definitely <laughs> always throws a wrench into things, you know. <laughs> totally, big time. And it gives people, you know, the liquid courage. You know, they probably, if they weren't tipsy, they might would notice, but they wouldn't be like, oh, whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where are your glasses? Yeah. You don't have glasses on. And you're like, mm, okay, have a great night. <laughs> but yeah, video editing, I can imagine. I, that's something I've like, I've recorded myself DJing a couple of times and I've tried to just edit yeah. my videos and stuff. And I used to be really into it a little before my um, diagnosis of Stargardt's. And, you know, I still did it for a while, but as my vi my vision declined and my passions for other things grew, yeah. it just like, it, it was hard, super hard for me, but I love cool video editing. It, are always neat yeah 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 video editing it's uh becoming more of like a common practice with how constant is these days mm -hmm. i used to feel more like i had a specialty but now it's like even like a, a like a big influencer is kind of a has become like a good video editor because they mm. they're editing all their content so you got to like do oh, more yeah. to stand out you know you got to like yeah. sharpen your toolkit and kind of know more intricate things and be ahead of everything which which is good you know it's good it keeps you on your toes but it's uh video editing is is definitely becoming a lot more popular um but hasn't affected me yet um yeah nice so with star guards In my head, for some reason, did, did, did the name change? 
No, not to my knowledge. Yeah, I, I don't know why I thought that, but I, I figured I'd ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's always been the cool little spacey, spacey name, Stargard. Yeah, so that I, is a I've cool always, name. I've always been like obsessed, even like like when I was a baby, like fully obsessed with space, aliens, yeah. UFOs, everything. And so when I got diagnosed with Stargard, so I was like, makes sick. sense. Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> cool name. How old yeah. were you when you got diagnosed? It was like a week before my 12th birthday. So I was 11. Okay. I think I was going into the sixth grade. Okay. Yeah. And was it just because you, you yourself were noticing things or were your parents noticing things? Both. Yeah. Um, so like in, I guess in the third or fourth grade, I started needing glasses and then I went to the doctor and I would always sit like super, super close to the TV or screen and at the whiteboard at school in like elementary school, I would walk up to the front and I think my teachers just thought I was like attention seeking, yeah. just being like, oh, I'm at the front. Look at me. I'm taking notes. But and I just thought I was, you know, I was just being a kid. Yeah. I was just doing whatever I needed to do to, you know, get the notes down. Then I went to the, uh, I guess it was my 12 year old checkup at my eye doctor. And she was like, whoa, the progression of vision loss that has gone on between this one year is not normal. Hmm. <laughs> so we need to get this checked out. And then she did like pictures of my retinas and saw the little speckly bits. Yeah, the, the um, stars. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. All my beautiful little constellations. <laughs> and um, then after that sent me to a retina specialist and that's where um, they diagnosed me with Stargardt. Okay. Mm -hmm. How was that like when you were, you know, 11? I, I was 12 when I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, which isn't as cool of a name, let's be honest here. <laughs> um, but I, I remember like my mom also had RP, so that's all I knew about it. Were, were, were you the only one in your family with Stargardt's? Yes, I yeah. am still the only one. Um, everyone in my family, from what I can tell, has like very regular vision. Yeah. Um, and so it was just kind of a, my parents actually handled it super well. They just basically kept it kept me with the mindset of like, nothing's wrong. Everything's going to be okay. Like you can do whatever you want. In fact, let me sign you up for dance classes. Let me sign you up for cheerleading. Like it was up until that year, like I never did dance. I never did cheerleading. But that year that I got diagnosed was the year that I just was like, screw it. Let's, let's go for it. And my parents were super helpful and just making me feel like everything was a-okay. Yeah, that that's amazing that you had that support. And I'm sure that support carries over to you currently. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of similar stories I've heard from um, the two blind brothers and Sam Seavey of The Blind Life, you know. Um, yeah. And the thing with Stargardt that's so fascinating to me as someone with RP is it's like the opposite of RP. So like RP is yeah. like we lose our peripheral first and then your yours is central and then out to peripheral. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the classic yeah. joke would be, you know, we take one, of, <laughs> if I stole one of your eyes, you know, we'd make a good team. You yeah, know? we could pair up yeah. perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm so dependent on... Um, my peripheral and so my eyes just dart around so much because i'm trying to like yeah. soak in i guess as much uh info as possible and um yeah. but yeah i it is nice sometimes having my central gone <laughs> because if i'm in a conversation with someone that i'm not too interested in or maybe they said something that pissed me off if i like defocus my eyes uh, their entire head disappears. So, you know, that's, that's a bonus. Oh, okay. oh I better be careful. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. <laughs> no, you know, I have like a, I have a couple of central blind spots. Um, and in the, and if it's a low light situation, you know, what, like what I'll see of someone's face, like, let's say like I'm in a dark restaurant with like having dinner with my wife and I look over 
I can just see her eyes, you know, yeah. but in the bright day, broad daylight, I, I will see her face. So it's like the light kind of changes my vision. Does, mm. does the light affect your vision at all? Um, here and there, I've recently, I've been having these, I've had them forever, but now recently they're starting to pop up more if, when light changes from yeah. dark to light. I get these like, I call them like orbs, but they're like blobs of oh, yeah. like bright I get those. neon purple and pink that just like kind of flow around my eyes a little. Is it kind of like how I describe it is, you know, when you're a kid or at least I, when I was a kid, I did this, I would close my eyes and rub my eyes and then it would make like mm -hmm. all these, these like lights flash. Yes. But I, I see that like right now, you know, I have the <laughs> floating around yeah. in front of me. And I'm kind of used to it now, honestly. Yeah, that's how mine is. Like, it'll everything will feel good and normal and blurry, like it yeah. usually is. And then all of a sudden, like a um, a bright purple orb will like come out of nowhere, and mm. I'm always like, oh, connecting with space again. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. Does does like does Star Guards when you're DJing like? That might be like a, a secret, like superpower, right? Because like you're not maybe the if you don't want to focus on the audience, you can kind of not focus on the audience, right? That is my superpower when it comes to DJing. Um, there's obviously pros and cons to it. Con is I'm working so intensely. I'm yeah. so focused of zooming in and out and my controller's all tactile, so yeah. I'm touching to make sure I have everything right, but I can't be as um, uh, performative sure. as some other DJs might be of being like, hey, everyone, like, uh, whatever, because I'm so locked in on getting my tunes sounding yeah. right that sometimes it's hard to connect with the crowd because yeah. One, I can't really see them. And two, I, it's just, I look like I'm working <laughs> when yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. doing it. Because if you see some DJs, they got a drink in their hand. They're mm -hmm. like, ooh, yippee, which is great. Props to them. <laughs> but <laughs> for me, I have to be like so locked in the whole time. Yeah. So, But it is kind of a superpower because I can just isolate myself and fully get my mix in my own little world of what I think sounds perfect and it doesn't let like a bar fight or a couple making out in front of me or you know whatever's going on a bottle girls yeah. coming by with sparklers like <laughs> I'm not too distracted by that stuff because I'm so locked into what's going on yeah and I think you know it that also works in your favor because you're focusing hard on what you're doing I think that might be would work against me if I'm putting myself in, let's say, let's say I was a DJ. I'm going to imagine myself as a DJ yes. and I don't have RP. I might, I might have too many drinks in my hands, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not like DJ, not put as enough focus on the DJ. And I, I might like design my set to be more party friendly for myself. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so, totally. so maybe it's, it works in your favor in the sense that like you're really in tune with what you're doing and more efforts being put in. And therefore, you know, the, the crowd gets a better experience because of it, you know, that's definitely what I'm going for. Yeah. Um, but like a few times when I have been handed like drinks or shots, you know, I'll reach to grab it. And it'll like slip out of my hand because I think I'm I'm like getting yeah. it or stuff. So sometimes when like the whole oh when people are like oh you're DJ oh partying all the time it's like it might look like it maybe for other DJs yeah. yes but um, with the amount of my eyes have to like work and I I always throw a different set every night I hate playing the same things over and over yeah. and over again so. I always want to do something different. And so I can't be, you know, blackout drunk and doing that. For so sure. it's just like, I, yeah. 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 That's, that's interesting. I was going to, I was going to ask you cause dealing with vision loss kind of makes myself kind of makes me have to plan ahead a little more, especially in like social situations. Yeah. 
if I'm, you know, for example, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm already thinking through you're, you're having to get to the venue, the club, and then you're having to set up your gear, you know, do you have a, a different process than others, other DJs do? Do you have to get there early? It, is it stressful setting up, you know, and all that kind of, you know, that comes with it? Um, yeah. So definitely when it comes to like a new location, yeah. if I'm at a new bar or um, private event or something, that's where I'm a little more on edge because I'm walking in with all of my equipment and I can't really see who's around me. Yeah. And so I get really insecure when like interacting with people like face to face um, of like, oh, is this for the blah, blah, blah event or wedding or whatever? Yeah. Um, but as far as setting up, I'm I'm probably just a little more quiet than most yeah. other DJs. I'm, you know, I'm not yelling like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. or I, I'm a little more um, to myself because I have to like touch every little thing and kind mm -hmm. of know exactly where all my little spots are. And, you know, everything's so uh, feeling based and like by touch. So I think I'm just a little more quiet, a little to myself and just kind of find my own little spot and the, I don't really bother anyone after that. That's yeah. I, t I just find it all interesting because it's, I don't know much about the world of, uh, DJ. Mm -hmm. And then I can imagine that, you know, the, how the, how vision loss does definitely doesn't stop you. Obviously it doesn't stop you, but you do have to adjust to it. So I guess, you know, you, so you basically, it sounds like you, you have, um, you amplify the magnification on your screen Mm -hmm. and uh you basically yeah. have learned ways to kind of do your thing which is which is awesome because i always want to encourage people to do their thing you know you know For find sure. a way to do whatever it is they want to try um that's so important yeah. because like when i started djing i couldn't just like type on youtube like how to dj as a blind person <laughs> you know or like yeah. best record box tips for blind people because it just wasn't a thing and so you just kind of what i always have to remind myself is like this is my way of working and so i just do it my own way i've created this whole career off doing it my way yeah. and so you just kind of you just have to make it work. And that's the thing that it's frustrating, but it's also really rewarding of knowing like, oh, I've, I've taught myself this and these skills that I've uh, developed over the years are like from me, <laughs> like yeah. I, I've learned it. And so it is one of those things of just reminding yourself like, oh, I, I can, I can do it. And it's just putting yourself out there and taking that little hop where it might be uncomfortable for a little bit, but if you really want to do it, you're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I agree. I think sometimes is the being uncomfortable is kind of part of the fun of it. Um, I love the stress. Give me high stress. I'll oh, perform yeah? better. Yeah, yeah. Give me a packed club and me like stressed out. Uh, that's when I perform the best. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of relate to that where I don't really have like a fear of like public speaking. Um. And I kind of like those moments where I, I know the stakes are a little bit higher because I, I know I'll try, I'll try harder. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you just need that little push. Like, like I'll use like a simple example, like let's say you have to give a speech at a wedding, Yeah. you know, you kind of have to, you write it and you, in that push, knowing that everyone's going to hear you say it, you're rehearsing it, you're practicing it. It kind of, mm -hmm. it, it kind of gives you a reason to try harder. You know, that's kind of what totally. those those stressful situations do for you. And I think uh, living with blindness kind of naturally kind of creates that for you. Even sometimes like, you know, let's talk about other aspects outside of DJ and like outside of the world, you know, of clubs and all that. How does Star Arts affect you, you know, on your on your day to day? You know, how how else have you adapted and all that? Ooh, I'm kind of a, I stick to myself. Yeah. I'm a very like, um, I think not only like does blindness affect my social skills and, um, but my, my job does as well. Um, 
because I'm working on the weekends, I work at night, yeah. it's hard to make plans with someone who's booked Thursday through Saturday. And, you know, so yeah. social realm is kind of fizzled out because that's my job. Um, what are your normal hours when you're DJing? <clears throat> oh, so I usually get to the club at 10 p.m. Um, cl clubs close here at 2 a.m. Yeah. And so I'm playing usually from like 1030 till close at 2 and then I get home around 2.30 and then do it the next day. Gotcha. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, but like my day-to-day, -day, um, I think my day-to-day -day is about to change since I'm about to move, um, but I always try to find like uh, like a good little coffee shop I can always walk to or um, a gym I can walk to, something little and small <laughs> yes. that I can just kind of manage and always walk my same little routes and everything. Yeah. and. Um, at, but it's nice that like, um, my Starbucks that I go to, like my baristas know that I'm visually impaired and will always write my name on the cups, like really big so I can awesome. see them better and, you know, just little things like that. But that's kind of my, that's the Texas day -day. charm. That is the Texas charm yeah. right there. That is true Texas love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you kind of, what, what you're describing is like you, you kind of have your go-to spots and you kind of know the routes and it's a very walkable area where, where you go and, and then you kind of yeah. spend your time outside of work recharging to get ready for work. For work again. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Virgo. I make work my entire life and personality <laughs> trait. So <laughs> that's kind of my whole, my whole gig. But, um, yeah, I love, uh, once I'm familiar with a location, yeah. whether it be like a coffee shop, restaurant, or apartment or something, then I then I feel like I know it really well. Once yeah. I get so familiar with it, like spatially, yeah. and my brain can like register, like, oh, this is my spatial little crib or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. then I'm really good at like managing it. But putting myself in a new situation or a new location is always a little nerve-wracking at yeah. first i kind of do the same thing i have like go-to's where i'm very familiar with the i know where the bathroom is i know mm -hmm. where the entrances are you know and i and if i go into a new environment i kind of scan it to kind of find a path to the bathroom and kind of know kind of just a general layout um but i always end up getting way more comfortable in spaces that i'm familiar with um you know, going back, I, you, you talked about that uh, barista. Yeah. So yeah, they had to learn you were visually impaired. How, how, how do you, is it something that comes up naturally or do you, do you explain it to people? Are people I, usually, do, do, is it something you have to tell most people or can they kind of, you know, figure it out? It's definitely something that I've gotten more comfortable with telling people. Yeah. Um, I think for a little bit when I wasn't telling people, people thought I was just aloof or a bitch or oh, yeah. in a bad mood. Um, and I, you know, I never want to give off that energy at all. Yeah. Um, and so I've had to kind of get comfortable with being like, Oh, what's up? I'm visually impaired. Do you mind reading this for me? Or like, Oh, I'm, can you sign the, whatever it might be. And yeah. so I've just had to like get comfortable with saying like, yo, I can't see that. Would you mind reading it? And so I've gotten a lot better. And like, even now with like airports, I've been flying a little more. Mm -hmm. And my mom um, came with me because she got like the gate pass. So she could like walk with me to the gate and someone was looking at my thing and just the way I was like, oh yeah, I'm visually impaired. And she was like, well, I don't think I've ever heard you just like in a normal day-to-day -day oh, yeah. interact is like, oh yeah, what's up? And she's like, oh, I'm really proud of you. I think during my young years of having Stargarts in like high school, I almost pushed it down as if it's not even a thing. Like, oh yeah, I can't really see that well, but like, eh, it's not that bad. You know, like that was kind of my attitude towards it. And obviously as it's progressively gotten worse throughout my life, I've had to get comfortable with asking for help and using my voice. And yeah, it's not, it's not easy thing to just come out and kind of 
make it part of your your routine of who you are, make it a part. Because some a lot of times I try to almost pretend that it's not part of who I am. So when you make it a part of who you are and you're not ashamed of it, you know. Yeah. It, you almost have to like submit to it of like, oh, okay, yeah. this is, this is it. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to be dealing with it yeah. and we got to just push through now. Definitely. Yeah. It's not easy. Not easy. So, uh, congrats on that, that, those steps you're taking. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. It's really challenging and it's, um, it's such a unique experience, I feel like, or such an experience that I don't really have too many um, visually impaired homies in my life. And so anytime I talk to other people that deal with it, I'm always like, oh, bless. Yeah, it's like nice. someone else knows the same exact type of awkwardness or social weirdness that I feel. Oh, yeah. Social anxiety, I think, is something that I don't feel like the blindness community talks about enough because I, I feel and I have a hunch that it's pretty common across the board for people, you know, living with, you know, some form of blindness. It, it, it does make you get in your head. Like, do I want to go to meet this friend at this restaurant? Do I want, it's like, is the, is, is the hassle yeah. of going or maybe, like someone maybe reaching their hand out to shake your hand and then you don't see it or something like that. You know, all these weird kind of things that, yeah. you know, most people don't have to think about. And then it can kind of, uh, when you, it's like, before I say yes to something, I have this flood of like, what if, what if, what ifs, like all these what ifs kind of come up Totally. and it can kind of make me more, um, more of a hermit than I actually am, you know? Oh, that you're, that is 100% the case because I've, I've Googled that so many times of like, uh, blindness and social anxiety yeah. <laughs> or like stark arts and social anxiety because I, I, I literally recently someone stuck their hand out and I totally was just like oblivious to it. And I was like, Oh, yeah. hello. Or like, especially, um, whilst DJing, like people will come up and like fist bump oh, or like yeah. kind of give you like a, a little like slap, yeah. like a high five or something. And I can't tell you how many times I've like gone up for a high five and it's been a fist bump or like little things like that. And then afterwards I'll just be like, I can't believe I just did that. Like, no, yeah. but they're not thinking about it. They just thought like, Oh, that girl's a little aloof. <laughs> like who cares? Yeah. You know, but it's it's definitely tough to get through that. I think what you got to rem remind yourself is you're you're the uh coolest person in the room. You're the <laughs> DJ. You know? So Thank you. if if you miss a high five, so what? <laughs> That's on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They and they're trying to high five you because they think you're cool. True. So it, it doesn't even matter if you make the connection of the hand. Yeah. You know? Yeah, true. That's a good, good headspace for it. Yeah. Just, just remind yourself that you're, you're more elite than them. I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause you know, what, what's kind of helped me project my vision loss without having to say it so much is like, social media, you know, like, so I put it mm -hmm. like in my bio, you know, have a vision thing, you know, retinitis pigmentosa. And then it kind of, and then people, if they follow me, they're like, oh, Lance has a podcast and he talks about this, this, and this. And therefore I'm kind of telling people without telling people. Yeah. And I know in your, in your Instagram bio, you know, you have like, you know, I think it says like badass visually impaired DJ, <laughs> yes. you know, um, do you find that social media is a positive in, in kind of expressing yourself as someone with a visual impairment? Totally, totally. If I, I love social media, um, yeah. Yeah. but at the same time, it is kind of like hard to use. But when I do express myself about like my vision and stuff, that's where I feel the most comfortable of just being like, oh, look, I have this. Hopefully someone else who has this can understand or relate or I also like to post my stuff. So 
other people know what's going on and that I'm not just a jerk or a bitch or like, oh, she didn't look at me when she walked past. Yeah. Like, what did, you know, mean? Uh, and so sometimes I, I feel like I need to almost remind people that this is what I'm going through on a daily basis, yeah. you know? And um, it is fabulous when I, cause I, I follow like the hashtags like star guards yeah. and um, visually impaired and stuff. And I love when I scroll through and just see people out here just killing it, living their best life and showing off like what they're doing and you know, their degrees, their whatever they're go got going yeah. on. It's always so sick and everyone has such a creative brain and their own way of doing things. That just makes me so happy. So seeing that on social media always makes me feel good. Oh, definitely. You know, cause I'm, I'm from <clears throat> like a, a small town in North Carolina is where I grew up and my mom still lives there. And, you know, growing up without social media, I only knew of my mom, you know, with who has, you know, who's legally blind. Yeah. And it felt very isolating. It felt very like we were alone, you know, and, yeah. and it, it felt like there wasn't anyone to relate to. I didn't know any anyone else. And I think the beauty of social media, you know, social media has a lot of cons too, but yeah. the beauty of it is like, you can, you don't have to feel so alone. You can be like, okay, there's a bunch of people with star guards. There's a bunch of people with retinitis pigmentosa. And it's kind of just a nice reminder, you know, cause it's different when you're told like a statistic, like I'm not alone. I know that based off the statistic, yeah. but they almost seem imaginary. Like where are these people, you yeah. know, when you're in like a small town like that, like, so, you know, social media is a great job of connecting, make you not feel alone. And then it also, you know, like you said, seeing people live their best lives kind of, it pumps you up and lets you feel more confident that you can do your own thing. And, and, uh, that's just what I like to encourage, you know, that's why I brought you on because you're doing your thing and you're, you're having fun while doing it, you know? Thank you. And I, yeah. I think that's a good message to send versus like some of the more like, you know, we all have our moments, you know, we all have yeah. our like, woe is me moments, but you know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with having those moments. But I think, I think in terms of like a North star, I think what you're doing and how you kind of treat vision loss, I think is, is, is the more, uh, I think it's just more energizing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the bad vision days are definitely part of it and seeing other people talk about like when they've had a bad day too yeah. is feels really like comforting of like okay like everyone's not just constantly killing it running marathons and surfing or you know skateboarding or whatever they might be doing um they are going through the hard days too and it's, I don't know, just the, I, I've always tried to come at the idea of vision loss with this is my one unique time on this planet. So yep. if it's going to be blurry, let it be blurry and, you know, love it. I, I you know, I, I know life is going to be hard and it's probably going to get harder in ways I can't even understand right now. But, um, you know, might as well face it with a good attitude and um, while doing fun things that make you feel happy and joy. And like, so just got to keep that little happy idea at the front of your brain, you know, to just kind of keep grinding, keep, keep working towards something that you love. Definitely. I agree. A thousand percent. Yeah. And you, you seem, uh, very happy and i was going to ask you what your what your secret was but i think we kind of talked about it unless you have any other tips it's probably spongebob and squishmallows <laughs> i grew up on spongebob and that was probably like i don't know how familiar you are with sweet little spongy but um his whole attitude is so happy and yeah. he's living such like a normal life just going to work has a couple friends yeah. like 
and I don't know, something about that just makes me feel so good. And like, you know, I love, I love what I do. I love my friends and I'm just going to keep on grinding. So I always try to keep a little SpongeBob mindset uh, <laughs> most of the time. I love that. And also, uh, you know, the, the alien mindset. Yes. I was going to ask you about that too, because you have a lot of alien themed, you have yes. like an alien emoji. You use that a lot. You have like <laughs> clothes do. with aliens on them. I thought, I was like, oh, I just have a few alien things. I went through my closet the other day and it was like, alien, 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 <laughs> space, SpongeBob, alien, alien. I was like, oh, okay. That's but that's always how I've been as like a little kid. Um, I've always loved space and aliens and the weird story I always tell my friends when it comes to like, oh, why do you like aliens? Why do you say that you're an alien DJ from space? Yeah. Um, like, I guess it was pre-kindergarten, so pre-K. Yeah. Uh, we had to, at the school I was at, we had to draw like a, a family portrait. And so it's all these just little stick figures yeah, yeah. and like a sun, a like half sun in the sky. So it was like me, my mom and dad, a stick figures. And then in the top right corner is a drawn out UFO with an alien inside. And so for me in my head of like, oh, Hell that's yeah. my family portrait. That's like my alien that's watching over me. That's yeah. like helping me get through my vision. So yeah. I've always, I've always connected with my little stars and <laughs> the planets and stuff. Yeah. I love aliens too. I grew up loving aliens. I had a ton of alien books. Yeah. I had alien action figures. I even have like an alien, like a little green like gray, little gray alien. I have a tattoo on my arm of a little oh, gray alien. Oh, sweet. I love um, the grays. Yeah. Again, the sirens. Oh. Uh, but. Cla where in New York are you? I'm in Brooklyn in a neighborhood called Greenpoint. Greenpoint. Okay. One of my good friends lives in Brooklyn. He's at, um, uh, like the design, graphic design school at, uh, NYU. Somewhere. Oh, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. 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 There's so many really cool creative people here. It's like, it's a, uh, it's good. Cause it keeps you again. It kind of keeps you on your toes. You're like, Oh, there's so many creative, talented people around me. I need it. I need a, it, it kind of <laughs> inspires you, but it also keeps you like going, you know, kind of fuels the fire. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love aliens. You know, I, I was going to ask you a silly question. Let's see. Do you think, because there's all this alien stuff going on. Yes. Do you think aliens have good vision? Ooh. I think they have what they consider good vision. So, like, I consider what I have good vision. Yeah. But to other people, it's not It's not their tea. It's not their fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's perfect. Um, I think they have... I don't think they have human vision. You I think, think any have aliens their... have star guards? Heck yeah. yeah. Me. Hello. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I think they're looking course. for you with all these sightings. I, that's what I think too. Just yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I have all my little alien things around. <laughs> Literally, like as I'm looking around right now, I'm like alien, 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 alien. But yeah, of course. Like I'm. I fully think they've been here. They're here. We've made connection. Whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm all about that space girl life. Yeah, it's been fun keeping up with. Uh, it's like every day now. There's like a new story where you. Uh, well, now it's the UAP they call them, and then it's yeah. And it's like, and then that whistleblower was just like saying that they have craft like, not from this planet, and the government's not even denying it anymore. And I know. I feel like we're just getting warmed up. Like they're oh, just yeah. sprinkling the little seeds of like, okay, can can humanity handle this right now? Can we throw another curveball at humanity real quick and see what see what we've got cooking? So maybe maybe in the next like ten years we'll we'll hear something about it. Oh yeah. I I think in I our lifetime so. we'll we'll see an alien. Oh God, that'd be so sick. Yeah, I hope so. I hope they're nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm going to be so disappointed. My whole like alien house shrine yeah. is going to be so like 
tearful <laughs> if they're mean. Yeah, and, it's like, like we've been idolizing these aliens since little kids, and we think they're nice. Ugh. We get I got like a tattoo on my arm, and then you have like a, I saw on your wall behind you. You have the stay weird with with a, a flying yeah. saucer, and it, then it's like it turns out this whole time they just they're like the. the just murdering everyone. <laughs> oh yeah, they just view us as like food yeah. or like energy or like yeah. oh, we'll just harvest these weird little creatures, yeah. these two-legged creatures. Ooh, they don't like us. They're so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what they would think. We're dumb little humans, but come on, don't you want to be friends with dumb little humans? Come on. Yeah, exactly. Come on, big aliens. We're cool. We yeah. play good music. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Skrillex kind of sounds like he makes music for aliens. Yeah. If, I don't know. Very in the very back of kind of by my DJ setup back there. Um, I have a framed little thing of Skrillex and he has like an alien shirt on yeah. and it's uh, his cover of Rolling Stone from forever ago. But yeah, ee, nice. That's my little alien shrine back there. Right on. Yeah. And I, I was gonna, I, I, I could, I probably should end on the aliens because it's such a fun <laughs> ending to the episode. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you, you know, because I like pumping people up and I like encouraging yeah. positive habits in the same way I think you sharing your your story about, you know, your passion for DJing and how you adapt to it. I also saw like on your Instagram that you're you're quite into fitness and exercise. And I wanted to ask you if you had any tips for, you know, any other visually impaired people out there who want to get in the gym, but maybe have an, maybe have that social anxiety about going to the gym or like how, how do we need any advice for them? Yeah. So I have to credit my dad okay. for helping me, um, get comfortable with the gym. Um, when I was about in high school, he, he's always going to the, he's like 60 and he fully hits the gym every single day, nice. like grind set gains type of protein man, you know, kind of like how Arnold Schwarzenegger yes. is. <laughs> he definitely gives that energy. And, yeah. um, so when I was younger, he would take me to the gym, um, and he just kind of would like walk me around and just say like, oh, this is the leg extension machine and yeah. he would sit down and show me and so he really got me familiar with um stuff like that uh i guess i was probably like 15 16 uh at that time and then when i came to college um my best friend and i would just go to the rec center and the rec center at texas a m is i always say it's like the size of a cruise ship it's enormous yeah. and it's packed and there's always like a bunch of people um so i'd always go with my best friend so if you have a good homie out there that okay. uh, wants to go with you have a little gym buddy and she would like walk me around and say oh this is where this is this is where this is and i got comfortable with it enough and i went so much that i started not needing her uh, you know okay. i love that she was there anytime she was there but anytime i could just go by myself um i would love it because i could go and find my little areas and go if you're going to a busy gym go on off hours yeah. when it's empty so you can have a little more space and not be worried about like dazing off and like staring at someone yeah. when you are not intending to stare at someone that has been me multiple times <laughs> and like and then i'll be like looking at someone and then they're like what's up and i'm like oh did not mean i'm so sorry yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. um but something with me is like, I, I'm an only child and I've like always craved like independence, like being alone is something that I love so much. And so when I can do things on my own, I love it that it pushes me to do it more on my own too. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I got comfy with, um, gyms and stuff. But now I just live in an apartment that has, a a small little gym here mm -hmm. that has a, like a squat rack and uh, some dumbbells and pretty simple but anytime I go I'm pretty much the only one in there since it's pretty teeny tiny and I just gotten adjusted to it and I yeah I pick up the wrong dumbbells all the time or you know stuff like that but 
it's just kind of you're just like steady. curling hundred pounders and you're, yeah. you think they're five yeah i'm like why are these five yeah. so heavy <laughs> you just get really yeah. strong because of it yeah <laughs> oh, i wish i wish muscle mommy realness i know that's what i but like i don't know when it comes to the gym like that's just something that's been a part of my life i used to even have like a fitness instagram like oh, yeah. i was up in it for a little bit um but it's just it just like makes me feel so good when i can be in my own little world listen to my music grind out a few little sweaty sessions and then just feel good and i get that i i know that it's hard being blurry and going into a new spot but once you're there it just feels so nice and yeah it it's it is kind of a hurdle of getting over the social interaction of it and i'm super lucky to have a spot that's usually empty so i don't have to worry about it <clears throat> but when it is busy i do feel that sense of anxiety that's like ticking in my brain of like mm -hmm. hey there's someone's here they could be looking at you you could be looking at them yeah. oh what if what if they did something and you just have to remind yourself that like other people aren't they're so invested in themselves they're really not going to pay attention of what you're up to most of the time and if they need help or if you need help like you can always ask you can always yeah. say like oh what's up i can't tell the difference between this like I think it's really easy to convince yourself that people are mean and, you know, shitty, but a lot of times they're just going to be like, oh yeah, it's this one or here, I'll help. And yeah. they won't ask questions. They're not going to be like, tell me about your diagnosis, <laughs> or like, what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, most of the time people are pretty chill about it. So um, it's just kind of gaining that confidence of speaking up and getting familiar yeah. Yeah. with the gym yeah. and then kind of not being afraid to ask for help when 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 needed and usually at front desks at gyms people are super sweet and if you're like hey can you walk me over to where the leg machines are or where the arm machines or the cable machines yeah. are they'll totally do it like yeah it's just a matter of like knowing what you want to do at the gym and then finding the help to execute that you know and then once you kind of start knowing it hopefully you'll be able to get it popping by yourself which is always cool oh for sure yeah and i wanted to bring that up you know there's obviously like you know aesthetic reasons to exercise you know you know you want to get be, be fit look fit but also it's mainly like in terms of your mindset and your mental health i like to push exercise out there as as kind of advice you know for oh, yeah. um people you know with a disability or living with blindness because you know i feel like the com blind community s deals with a lot of uh mental health issues yeah. and i for me exercise and working out does wonders for my brain so i always try to f find ways to sneak in you know uh, yeah you know promoting you know exercise and being f it's it's just so good yeah. for your head your head space it's so important yeah. and you know, I'll go through waves of like not going, but a lot of the times, even if I just go for like 30 minutes, get on the treadmill, get a little sweaty, get in, you know, start thinking. I find that's a time where I can just allow my brain to just roam creatively and just kind of be on its own little path. And I, I love, I love the gym and, and yeah, for physical, like, oh, I want to look nice, yeah. but you know, I've, over the past year or so, I've probably gained weight, but still hit the gym. And I'm still like, like, I'm not overly angry about like, oh, I did, I haven't done my, my triceps today. Or like, <laughs> you know, I went through a time where I was like, I'm going to compete. I'm going to do bodybuilding. Yeah. I'm going to like get into it. And then taking it that far was a little too much yeah. <laughs> you know like like that kind of reverse did a uno reverse card of like oh you're doing this for your mental health oh and now your mental health's like <laughs> gonna be questioned with the the fitness stuff um because it would just be like too much yeah but when you can just like vibe with it and be comfy just like getting a few little reps in mm -hmm. and or stretches or whatever like oh, it just feels so good it gets your day going on such a positive route too yeah, thousand percent. 
Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think you shared a lot of good, helpful, practical advice. You also opened up, you know, about your own mindset behind, you know, your work as a DJ. And, you know, I learned I learned a lot myself. Aww. So, well, maybe next time we'll throw it down and you can uh, get on the ones and twos, give a little scratch sesh. All right. Up. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I, I jam out to, uh, I have to, now I'm going to go listen to some Skrillex. I haven't listened to him yes. in a bit, so I'm going to throw some of his stuff on. He, his new album, I like some of the new songs. There's one song on there with, um, he has a, Anthony Green as a singer I like, and he oh. and here's a um, song on his new album I like that has Anthony Green on it. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, sweet. But. He, he's released a lot of new music this year, so there's a lot to uh, dive into. And so I, I'm I'm always gonna be ride or die Skrillex my entire life. Like he's always my my number one. Hell yeah, Sonny Moore. <laughs> yes, Mr. Sonny. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think uh, you know I could we could keep going, we keep talking, but I think we covered enough. And uh, thanks again for coming on. Oh yes. I I think this episode's gonna be really great and a lot of fresh new info, you know, for my uh, listeners out there. And um, where can people find you if they want to find you? Yeah. So my Instagram is DJB underscore official. And from there, my link tree has everything, um, everything you need to know. So there's my SoundCloud and Twitter and all that fun stuff. But mostly I do all my stuff through Instagram. Right on. And I'll have a link in the episode description. If you want to just click there, I'll make it easy for you. I'll have a link to DJ B's or uh, Bridget. Yeah. I had to say both at least once in the yes. episode. Um, <laughs> My government name. Yeah, your government <laughs> name. But I think that wraps up this episode. And uh, again, I'm super happy you came on. And uh, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>